We talk a lot on this podcast about relationships that we have with other people, a theme that I keep seeing time and again and is a focus for us in 2024 is just shifting this messaging around putting yourself first and making it a positive and making this idea of selfishness as something that is necessary, as something that is required for you to be the best version of you versus the old talk track that we are leaving behind in 2023 of oh, I'm so much better when I put everybody else before me as a mom, as a sister, as a coworker, as an employer, whatever, fill in the blank on the hats that you wear. I am so much better when I serve other people at the expense of serving myself. None of that for 2024. Let's link up with Krista on The Fix. She's a wellness coach with a focus on mental well-being and physical strength. What is up, Fix listeners? Welcome back to our latest episode of the Fix podcast. I'm your host, Krista Huber, and it's been a hot second since we did a solo episode. So we're into our third week of January 2024, a brand new year, a big year at that. We have so much to look forward to, so much that I'm excited about. And let's be honest, I'm always excited about something, but that is the kind of energy that we all should bring to everything that we do this year. At least that's my continued commitment to myself. And in this episode, I thought it might make sense to actually update you guys, just kind of given where I left things with our last solo episode, where I opened up about my experience with, honestly, deprioritizing my fitness and myself at the expense of focusing on my business throughout most of 2022, at least the latter half of 2022 and all of 2023. And I got tons of feedback on that episode. I appreciate all of you. You guys know if you've been here for a hot second, I am all about keeping it straight up honest. I want you to know exactly what I'm going through as I'm going through it. And I made some decisions over the last few weeks as I kept pushing amazing guests your way. I've been working on some things for myself in the background. And just as much as I hold all of our clients to this standard, just as much as I hold you listeners to this standard, with it being the beginning of a new year, I took some time to invest in a few different things and come up with a few priorities that I have for myself going into 2024. So I figured, let me kind of update everybody on how things are going so far. And based on the feedback from this episode, what I actually am planning on doing is kind of giving you like a monthly update as a solo on where things are progressing for me in my journey that I'll call with my relationship with myself. We talk a lot on this podcast about relationships that we have with other people, a theme that I keep seeing time and again, and is a focus for us in 2024 is just shifting this messaging around putting yourself first and making it a positive and making this idea of selfishness as something that is necessary, as something that is required for you to be the best version of you versus the old talk track that we are leaving behind in 2023 of oh, I'm so much better when I put everybody else before me as a mom, as a sister, as a coworker, as an employer, whatever, fill in the blank on the hats that you wear. I am so much better when I serve other people at the expense of serving myself. None of that for 2024. I'm not doing it. So you're not doing it. And in this episode and in my solo episodes, as I continue to kind of bring you along on this whole process for myself, I thought it might be kind of cool if I shared a few of the intentions that I'm setting for myself on a regular basis, the goals that I'm setting for myself, specifically in the context, of course, of my fitness and nutrition, and just really kind of keeping myself accountable by having this monthly check-in with you guys via the podcast. And hopefully, like I said, based on your feedback, if you guys like it, it's definitely something that I would love to keep up throughout the course of this year. So I have a little ask for you. And that's when you do listen to this episode, let me know if you're into it. Let me know if it's something that you kind of want to go on this journey with me. Hopefully you do, but if you don't, we can bag it and I'll make this a regular thing. So cool. So happy Thursday. If you're listening to this episode, the day that it drops, we are already halfway through the first month of the year, which every time January rolls in, 
I am like blinking and it's already February. And then February is a short month, though. We do get an extra day this year. And then I'm like, how's it already February? And then how's it March? And on and on and on and on. So that mindset of the go, go, go is actually what I am going to talk about in this episode. Because I sat down, I got my journal right here in front of me for a few notes. And I really started to get clear on what I wanted to do for the fitness fix, for my team, for our clients, for the podcast community, all you amazing listeners out there in 2024. And it all came back to the same idea of by prioritizing Krista and by prioritizing my relationship to me, I can better help all of you. And it's taken me a long ass time to make this realization. I have always prided myself as somebody who wants to give to other people, as someone who wants to serve other people. And none of that is going away. But I started to recognize that if I'm going to walk the walk and talk the talk of everything that I ask our fitness fix clients to do, of insights that I share inside of these podcast episodes, of teachings I'm hearing from our guests on this show, I better commit myself to it too. And where I find myself often getting stuck is that I am just in this constant state of go, go, do more, more. Just like keep trying to level up. And listen, I don't think that's a bad thing. I actually love that about myself. It's something that I derive a lot of satisfaction off of. Why? Because at the end of a year, at the end of a three month, six month period, whatever, I usually have the ability to look back and be like, wow, look at all these things that I accomplished. However, I'm starting to see the shift in again, keeping with this idea of putting yourself first and prioritizing my relationship with myself, that what I actually desire for my own life in 2024 and beyond is to find this flow and this groundedness amid the hustle. And here's what I mean by that. For the last two years, like I said in my previous solo episode, as I've shared many times over the course of 2023, I have just been in a mode that is all about growing the fitness fix, continuing to pour into as many people as we possibly can, and just spreading the messages through this podcast on social media and always being plugged in, like literally always being plugged into my phone. You will never see me without my phone in my hand unless I'm sitting here recording this podcast. It is almost one of the only times that my phone actually goes and do not disturb because I always have this feeling of, oh, there could be a client that wants to ask me a question or, oh, I might have this opportunity to chat with somebody on Instagram and talk about some of the topics that I'm sharing in my latest posts. And again, I love that. I truly love showing up for this community. So it's actually been a little bit of a test for me to start to think hard and get very clear on how I can still show up that way and serve that way going into this new year, but do it in the context of still taking care of me. So like I said, I got a journal and that was a big first step, but my biggest first step through this entire process was actually hiring a new coach. So I've got an awesome arsenal of coaches in my back pocket that are supporting me in every single facet and capacity of my life in 2024. And that's a tip that if you want to take any notes and maybe find any inspiration on what you might consider for your 2024 game plan, of course, I'm biased. But step number one, I would recommend a coach. And I want to be open about this part of my process because I think too often, so many people look at fellow coaches online and it doesn't even matter what kind of discipline you're a coach in, whether it's fitness, whether it's business related, whether it's a career coach, it doesn't matter. So many people look at those of us in the coaching space and think, oh, well, this person's got it all figured out. And you guys know that is not how I vibe. That is not how I operate. And I want to be transparent that I am always looking for the areas where I maybe don't have it figured out. And instead of just sitting on my hands and hoping that maybe someday I'll find the time to figure it out, I gave myself a real hard look in the mirror and actually looked at the areas of my life that are working for me and why they're working well. So let's use the fitness fix as an entire community, as a business, as an example. My brand and our 
community has completely leveled up since September of 2022 up until this point has grown massively because I leaned in and I asked for support and I hired a fantastic business coach. So I thought to myself, okay, well, that's maybe a hint as to what works well for me and having someone to speak to, having someone to bounce ideas off of, having someone to help give me structure when I don't necessarily have all the answers and maybe have a bunch of ideas, but don't know how to execute on them. Well, I have this whole track record of what's kind of been going on in my business life for the past 18 months that can clue me into the fact that working with somebody is probably a step in the right direction. Take that same example, apply it to my nutrition. While I didn't necessarily prioritize my nutrition and fitness to goals to the degree that I would like to and intend to going into 2024 during 2023, I did maintain a relationship with my coach that entire time. And if you haven't caught our episode that we did last week, I strongly encourage you to go back and check it out. It was a really fun one. My only repeat guest I've had on the show so far in the last three years and a good one at that, but Aram is awesome. And I'm really excited to continue to have him in my corner as I really recommit to myself and in doing so recommit to my fitness and nutrition goals going into this brand new year. So there's another area, check that off. Okay. And then for this podcast, I've got an amazing team behind me that helps with the editing process. I've got my podcast mentor. I'm inside of a mentorship group with him. And it's just another amazing area that I get the chance to connect with other people, bounce ideas around. And guess what? We have a lot to show for it with the way this show has grown over the course of the last three years. So I'm kind of taking inventory of all these things coming through the end of December, doing what people typically do as we get into the end of the year and being in that reflection mode. And I kept getting stuck on a lot of the thoughts that I shared inside of the solo episode that I did back in December, where I just talked about how I allowed myself to kind of push my own workouts or be really reactive to my own nutrition to the point where I wasn't necessarily comfortable and I'm and not necessarily comfortable right now as I sit here and record this with how my clothes fit or what I see when I look in the mirror. And for as much as I recognize, I know what to do. I talk about this on my Instagram stories a ton. So many of my clients and so many of the people inside of our program and people who chat with me back and forth in the DMs all of us are so quick to say, I know what I need to do, but I'm just not doing it. And that quote kept replaying again and again in my head because it's coming so up so much with the people around me that I'm like, is this maybe trying to tell me something about what I could work on for 2024? And that landed me to hiring an embodiment coach. Now, if you're like, what the heck is an embodiment coach? The best way that I can sum this up is it's a person who can help you tap into your emotions, who can help you work with being more regulated, help you with that feeling of what I called being grounded. And in my case, creating structure, creating accountability to be grounded, despite my innate side that is just like, go do, don't sit still, don't sit in silence and just keep moving. And I was like, I don't know if this is exactly what I need, but I know I need to make this change because it's not really in alignment with the way I see myself leveling up in 2024. Now, let me be even more specific. How do I see myself leveling up in 2024? Well, first and foremost, it's making the time for my own fitness and my own nutrition while holding my clients and holding our team to the same exact standard. Because if I can push them to do it, if I have all the tools in my toolkit that I'm sharing with them, why not practice those same things for myself? But I recognized that I could keep saying that, or I could create the support that I needed. I could find the accountability that I needed to actually make that happen. And as I thought about the fact that I already had a nutrition coach in my toolkit, It just made it really obvious to me that something else was missing. And whether that was just by chance or by the fact that I have some really awesome friends that I have developed really close relationships with over the last two years, talking to them, seeing that they've kind of been in similar spaces as they've grown their businesses, as as they've just started to hold themselves to higher standards and really want to just live their absolute best lives and, and 
be and show up and be the best person that they possibly can on a regular basis. A few of them mentioned to me, Hey, have you looked into this type of coach? And it turns out that I actually had someone on my podcast who did this type of work over two and a half years ago, but I didn't have a full appreciation for the type of coaching that they provided. So ironically, as small as the world is, turned out that the new coach that I'm working with actually knew this person that I had on my show. And when we connected, it all made sense. And I was like, you know what? I wasn't in the right place at that time to receive that coaching, but we're coming full circle. We have this mutual connection outside of the friends that also work with them. And this just seems like it's meant to be. So I'm setting the stage for you and giving you all this context because much of what I am prioritizing in this new year will ultimately have a domino effect in that it will allow me to be more consistent in the gym. It will encourage me to be more thoughtful about planning out my meals. But I thought it would be cool if I shared a few things. I set a bunch of intentions over the course of the last few weeks that I've been working with my new coach but I wanted to share them because they're not necessarily things that might be so obvious when you're trying to figure out how to move forward when you feel stuck. And once I kind of landed on these intentions with my new coach, I was like, oh, of course, like it makes sense that I desire these things, but I needed to be honest and recognize I could keep saying that I want to do these things, but clearly I'm not doing them. So let's come up with a better approach. Let's come up with maybe a new why, a new motivator behind what is going to drive me to continue to do these things, to pursue these intentions so that I can then start to feel the positive effects from them. And that becomes a downstream effect into maybe losing some body fat, making more time for myself, feeling better in my clothes, feeling more confident and all these things that, again, I know so many of you come to this show looking for inspiration for. And if I'm not living it right alongside of you, then that doesn't I I don't see how it could be any more authentic than just putting it all out there on the table. So that's exactly what we're doing here. So over the course of the last two weeks, I've come up with like five or six different intentions And most of them come back to this idea of slowing down to ultimately speed up. As I referenced the whole groundedness amid the hustle. I am the type of person that will stack my calendar and stack my day with a bunch of meetings, a ton of goals, all these things that I want to get done that sometimes I just get sucked into that vortex of like, oh my gosh, it's six o'clock. Where did the day go? I've only been outside for like five minutes. If any of my clients told me they were doing that, I would be the first person to be like, hello, girl, if that is your day to day and that is what typically looks like a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday for you. Well, we know exactly why you're having so much trouble hitting the basics like hitting a protein goal. So I'm reframing all of it. And here's how I'm reframing it. Slowing down to speed up just encaptures this idea that if we're more present and we're more aware and ultimately more intentional about why we're making the decisions we're making, it's a lot easier for us to potentially stop and ask, is this decision serving me or is this thought serving me? And let me give you an example. So that's super tangible, keeping with this idea of protein and a busy work schedule. I can't tell you how often I have myself experienced this. I have had this conversations with clients more times than I could possibly count. But to my entrepreneurs out there, to my corporate girlies out there who are chasing that bag, full respect to you, because I'm out here doing the same. How easy is it for us to wake up in the morning, whether you work from home or you're going to your office, maybe you set yourself up for the day pretty well. You get your breakfast in, you get like 50, 60 grams of protein, but then what happens all of a sudden it's like one, one you have this 20, 30 minute window in between some meetings and you know, you need to eat lunch. Admittedly, I have had a lot of times where I will skip and then wait and be like, oh, I'll eat something in a little bit when I have more time to sit down and can make a bigger meal. And then what happens? I think you guys who've experienced this can probably answer. You get hangry. You can relate, right? And 
you start to maybe open the bag of chips and munch on that while you're trying to prep your dinner. And then all of a sudden you're like, wait a second, like, how did I eat more than half of this bag? Or you're getting to that point in the end of the day where you piled on so much work, you're pretty tired that when you have the option to either maybe throw together a quick meal that honestly, between your air fryer or even something that's so quick and requires no prep, like canned tuna would take you only 10 minutes. What sounds a whole lot more appetizing food that you didn't cook that you can either go out and pick up DoorDash, whatever it is, it happens and it's okay. What's not okay is when it keeps happening again and again, and then you find yourself stuck wondering why you don't feel your absolute best. And part of the reason that you don't feel your absolute best, it's not because of the decisions you made of whatever food you ate. It's actually because you're just going through the motions. And it's actually because I've realized that you or me in this case are so outside of your own body, you're so outside of that present moment that you don't even recognize these decisions stacking up and leading you away, leading you astray from where it is that you ultimately want to go and how it is that you ultimately want to lead your life. So a big component for me of the intentions that I've set for myself in 2024, and then I want to break down how I'm actually doing these intentions on a daily basis is just being way more mindful, being mindful in my daily actions. What I mean by that is I'm talking like, even if I'm washing the dishes, no podcast playing, no music playing, just even challenging myself to not think about the to-do list that's running in my head, the next thing I need to jump on my computer for, and just being present. A meditation, if you will. Listening to the running water from the sink. Feeling what it feels like, the gloves and the soap against whatever dish it is that I'm cleaning and just actually paying attention to how I'm feeling inside my own body. And you'll notice that when you pay attention to these smaller moments, and I can tell you this from personal experience, because I've seen such a shift in the last two weeks that it becomes a lot easier to catch yourself, to rethink some of the decisions that you might've made passively. The decisions that you think, oh, like it's okay for me to make this decision today. It's not that huge, that big of a deal. I can fix this tomorrow. And then all of a sudden you make the same decision the next day and the next day. And what I love about this intention and what I love about the example of something like a small task like the dishes is it's actually really easy to implement. And that's been important for me too. As somebody who has really high standards, as somebody who piles a lot on her plate, I find that I'm not always open to, and I don't find these really small opportunities that obvious when in reality, I can set myself up this way and guarantee my success because guess what? I'm washing the dishes every single day, either way. So why not just bake in that time that I'm already spending there, make it easy to just challenge myself to slow down for a couple of minutes and pay attention directly through the task at hand. I'll give you one that I tried this weekend, an example of that mindfulness that was even a little bit harder for me. It was weirdly warm for like half the day on Saturday, and then it quickly got very cold here in Jersey, and we've been expecting some snow on and off for the last like week and a half. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to go to the beach because it happens to weirdly be like 50 degrees, so why not? And I'm not going to listen to a podcast. I'm not even going to pull out my phone. Like I said earlier, I'm always plugged in. I'm always checking on something. I always got a notification going off. So when I tell you guys this was hard for me, this was hard for me. But I had the best time. And I found so much peace just being in a place that I absolutely love, watching the waves, hanging out with my dog, who, if you haven't seen from my Instagram stories, probably loves the beach more than any human being ever. She senses when she's getting close to the beach and literally starts sprinting up there. It's the cutest thing ever. And I had so much more appreciation for how much she appreciated that moment because I was just sitting there present, paying attention. So the whole mindfulness thing is one of my first intentions that I'm focusing on. The next one, again, kind of keeps with the same theme, but I am going to find a hobby for myself this year that does encourage me to be more present. That is something that doesn't have to do with being plugged into my phone, doesn't necessarily have to do with something fitness related. It's so easy as a fitness professional to kind of say, and maybe it's a little bit of a cop out, I don't know, 
that my hobby is going to the gym. And I love going to the gym. I do. Sometimes I don't always love it. I've been candid about that. I have to convince myself to get there. But I've thought about trying to find something new that I'm just doing for the sake of enjoying versus doing for the sake of expecting an outcome. And what I mean by that is this, when it comes to my time in the gym, at least, and a lot of our clients inside of the fitness fix, and maybe some of you listening to this, we may enjoy the gym. Like once we're in our groove and we're feeling good and the endorphins are flowing, we're sweating a little bit, but it can be hard to just do it for the sake of just like sheer fun. Because at least when I'm in there, I'm thinking to myself, okay, I'm here to get strong. I'm here to have the most mind muscle connection for this exercise. I want to get the most out of this work because in the long run, my decision to show up and work out this specific way is exactly what's going to help me get the results that I desire when it comes to losing body fat. So maybe this is where you all out there can hold me accountable. Give me some suggestions. Give me some ideas. We'll see how closely you guys are listening. But one thing I've kind of brainstormed for myself is And yes, you could kind of say this is related to what I do, but something around cooking, whether that's taking a cooking class or trying out new recipes that I do just for the sake of enjoyment, not to document them for Instagram, not to have to post in any of our client groups, but just experimenting in the kitchen, following a recipe because I do need a little bit of structure there. And then maybe getting some more tools in my toolkit by actually going somewhere and working with a professional to do this. So that was something I threw out to one of my girlfriends and she was like, I'm in, let's do it. And I think that might be something that I explore this year. And again, how does this ultimately have a domino effect or an impact for me that relates back to my health and wellness journey is that In choosing this for myself and choosing this hobby for myself and improving my relationship with myself, it just becomes that much easier to want to take care of myself in all aspects. It becomes that much easier to actually promote and reframe this idea of tracking my own macros, of holding myself to the same standards that we do our fitness fix clients as something that I'm doing, not just for the sake of doing it to get this end goal of maybe changing a dress size, but more specifically as just a way for me to love me, a way for me to have an appreciation for myself the same way I ask all of you listening to the show every week to do for you. So what else do we have? Another one around intentions for my weeks, months through 2024 is really taking a look at how I want to structure my days. One of the best parts about running your own business is that I have total autonomy over my schedule. But again, being someone that wants to serve clients and be available for this community, I have a tendency to shift things around based on when other people are available versus really asking myself, what activities do I like to do at certain times of day? What activities do I want to do first thing later in the day, certain days of the week, so that I actually really look forward to my schedule versus feeling like I set this like mountain of a to-do list for myself on a Monday, like I think so many of us are guilty of, and then feel behind going into Tuesday, Wednesday, and so on and so forth. So I've already made some adjustments to this, but one of the first ones that of course relates directly back to my own fitness and nutrition is committing to a specific gym time on my calendar and telling myself that this is when I'm going to the gym so much so that I already blocked it. And it's not something that I plan to compromise on. I can adjust my schedule and set it so that nobody can even book appointments with me at that time. And if somebody asks, Hey, let's do a podcast on this time or this day, I can easily say, Hey, I have these other hours in the day. And this is where some of these things, and even just saying them out loud and and saying this on this podcast, a lot of it sounds so obvious because it sounds like things that I would totally advise other clients to do. But what I'm hoping I show in sharing this is what I said previously, that just because I'm a coach doesn't mean I always have all these things figured out. And it really took me talking to another professional, talking to someone else, having this person challenge me and literally say to me, during a coaching session, let's put this on your calendar right now. Like, let's go do it. Let's not just talk about it. Let's do it. And then we did it. That's what I needed to create the structure for myself that will ultimately help me just level up in every single area of my life. And the other area that I plan on doing that, that I think is really important and also relates back to health and fitness is in my wind down routine, getting clear on what time 
that you might put your phone in do not disturb, what time you close the laptop for the day versus kind of sprinkling in some work later at night while simultaneously taking care of a few other things. And I've tried this in small doses already, simply saying to myself, okay, let's create some kind of nighttime routine. I don't even know what I'd want my nighttime routine to look like because half the time I'm still sort of working on a few things on my computer when really I could use that time to prep for the next day, maybe do a quick little yoga, just enjoy some Netflix, hang out with Bean, sit on the floor and play around with her, whatever it is. But I already tried it a couple times this past week and I slept so much better and I felt so much more refreshed going into the very next day. So those are just a couple of things that I'm really focusing on that seem like small adjustments, but they're actually big because they're intentional. I literally use the word intentions and they're big because my why behind doing them has nothing to do with just how I feel on a day-to-day basis, but how I see myself, where I want to be and the person that I want to be as I move into the rest of 2024. And to kind of round up this episode and just leave you guys with a little food food for thought, I'm going to leave you with this. This past week, my new coach shared with me that it's really important to recognize that my current reality, everything around us, and you, the listener, should take this in, your current reality, exactly as you see it today, has been created by all of the thoughts you've had over the course of maybe the past year or maybe even the past two years, or maybe even the year before that. It depends on how long you've been holding on to certain thoughts and certain beliefs. So if you desire to change something, in my case, if I'm looking to find this effort of slowing down for the sake of speeding up, I need to start believing and having thoughts around slowing down. Because if I wait and say, oh, I'll just put that off to later until I reach a certain goal, well, later is not going to come because I'm not showing up and I'm not believing that currently in the moment as it stands today. So do yourself a favor and maybe audit some of the beliefs that you have that are keeping you from operating the way you would like to operate as we move into this new year. And with that, like I said, you got some homework, give me some feedback. Did you like this? Did you find it helpful? Is it interesting? Are there other things you want to learn about as I go along on this journey? I plan to be an open book about it. I'm excited to share more of my learnings, the things that I learn about myself as I explore this relationship with myself. And I can also promise you that a lot of this work as I go along this journey with myself will trickle into coaching inside of the Fitness Fix program. So you heard me already say it, that investing in a coach is such a powerful way to help you move into, to step into the person that you desire to become. That's not going to happen if you keep telling yourself that you'll do it on your own. You need to go back and you need to look at your track record and ask yourself if doing it on your own, if utilizing other methods over the course of the last year or two has actually truly really helped you get to where you want to go. And it might feel scary. It might feel like a, oh, I'm kind of calling myself out on some things that I need to work on. Good. That's the whole point because that's where the growth really truly happens. So this is my invitation to you to apply for one-on-one coaching with the Fitness Fix. We are going to limit our spots on our roster as we move through the end of January. And here's why. We want action takers. We want the person who feels uncomfortable, who feels like, damn, I heard this and I see a lot of myself in this story, or I did need to be called out and I'm ready to make the change, but recognize that if I'm truly ready to make the change, I'd be a hell of a lot better off if I did it with a whole ass team in my corner. And we want to be that team for you at the fitness fix. So jump over to the show notes before you hear the music credits roll out, click on the link to apply to one-on-one coaching. And I'll reach out to you, set up a time for us to chat and learn more about your goals and whether we might be the best team to make it happen. And with that, from wherever you're listening from, we hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and we will catch you guys next week. 